Hello, dear chess friend. My name is Andrei Ostrovsky. I'm an international master and chess coach originally from Ukraine. And you're welcome to the course The Art of Calculation. Each and every move in chess is a decision, and the quality of the vast majority of decisions is directly connected with the quality of the calculation. So if you wanted to improve your calculation skills, you made a good choice purchasing this course. Throughout the course, uh, you will learn concrete techniques of calculation, as well as receive uh, advices and further training uh, that will help you to come up with better calculation, better decisions, and bring your tournament results to the next level. In this very first lesson, we are going to answer the question, why do we miss the opportunities? Because the answer to this question will help us to understand what actually should we improve regarding the calculation? For this reason, we will discuss two practical examples. It will help us to sort the things out. So the first example you can see on the board, uh, it is a typical position from the Sicilian defense. So white managed to uh, force black to play e6, e5. Uh, the pawn is already on f5, which means that uh, white has more space on the king side d5 square is uh, weakened and one of the typical ideas for this kind of positions is to try to occupy d5 square with the minor piece uh, ideally with the knight but as we can see uh, black managed to play h6 uh, which prevents white's bishop d2 from going to g5 for instance exchanging the knight f6 and occupying d5 with uh, the bishop or the knight so this idea simply doesn't work and white's pieces are placed uh, the way that actually prevents this uh, strategic idea. Uh, so white's pieces are mainly focused on the king side, uh, which means that probably white has to think of uh, the attack on the king side. So how to do this? Uh, usually when you have a pawn on f5 in such a situation, a very logical idea is to continue with uh, the pawn storm, for example, like g4, g5, and so on. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it may be very risky because uh, if you play g4, uh, you also weaken your own king uh, and uh, the bishop c6, which already occupies long diagonal a8, h1, will be very annoying, especially if black manages to uh, come up with the breakthrough in the center with the help of d6, d5. So this idea doesn't look very tempting. Uh, what else white can do? So uh, it is definitely a critical moment, exactly the moment uh, when uh, the calculation required. My first advice to you is actually to uh, analyze the position uh, when you deal uh, with the problem of uh, what to do next. So if there is a critical moment in the game, uh, it's definitely a good idea to come up with the analysis of the position with the uh, proper evaluation of this position. Usually when you play a game of chess, uh, you have uh, some sort of evaluation in your mind. Uh, it uh, actually changes uh, move after move. So uh, you spot some changes, uh, you tweak your evaluation and so on. Uh, but prior to making a decision uh, in a critical position, it is a good idea to make the uh, complete analysis of the position once again because it will help you to refresh your understanding of the position. Maybe you will spot some uh, new weaknesses in the opponent's camp and so on. So as for this position, we already uh, discussed several things. Uh, it is uh, also very important to understand the power of uh, own pieces and vulnerabilities of uh, opponent's pieces. For example, in this concrete position, uh, the bishop on b3 looks very active controlling diagonal a2 g8, which means that uh, black's f7 is under pressure. It is a typical object of attack for white uh, in such a situation, but uh, at the moment it is not that simple to uh, find the follow-up. So bishop already attacks f7, but uh, it's not clear how white can attack this uh, f7 point uh, with uh, another piece, for example with the queen, because knight f6 controls h5 square. So uh, it is not possible right away, but it is a good information for uh, the future because at some point it uh, may be possible. 
Um, as for other vulnerabilities in Black's camp, uh, we can notice that Black's position on the king side is a bit compromised with h7, h6 move. So we discussed that it is a good idea for Black to prevent bishop g5, bishop f6 from a pure positional point of view, but uh, every uh, pawn push, every pawn move uh, on the flank uh, that uh, is the object of attack for your opponent is kind of concession. So uh, this weakens uh, Black's position a bit, and uh, h6 is usually a good hook for g4, g5. Uh, we already discussed that it is not a good idea for white. But what is a uh, good thing for white is that uh, h6 is a weakness in itself. Because uh, white in many cases can come up with sort of sacrifice. Very typical one. So bishop d2 can go to h6. Sacrifice in itself. Uh, it will bring white uh, two pawns as a material compensation. At the same time, this will help white uh, to destroy... Uh, black skin shelter on the king side so the king will be definitely exposed to uh, white's pieces and white can probably come up with a further attack so bishop h6 is actually uh, the very tempting candidate move here uh, because we can also notice the strange position of black skin uh, usually uh, the king occupies g8 square here it occupies f8 square which means that after this sacrifice on h6 uh, and uh, the queen takes h6, uh, the king will be attacked. So uh, this will give us the time uh, to come up with further attacking activities maybe. So bishop h6 is one candidate move. Uh, another candidate moves uh, can be uh, connected with uh, transferring the pieces to the king side. For example, a logical idea uh, could be to lift the rook f1 through f3 to g3. To exert additional pressure on g7. Um, as for other moves, well, uh, probably bishop e3 could be considered just attacking the queen on c5, uh, but uh, it definitely doesn't give white uh, anything tangible because the queen simply goes to a5, for example, or b4, and nothing really changes in the position except for the fact that e4 pawn starts hanging. So, uh, two main candidate moves rook f3 and bishop takes h6. And uh, here is the question with which move to start. Of course, with the bishop h6, because it looks very tempting and it is a forcing continuation. So you have to start your calculation with bishop h6, pawn takes h6. Otherwise, you have just an extra pawn and you continue the attack on the king side uh, because the h file becomes open. Queen takes h6. And here you have to focus on uh, black's possibilities. Uh, there are only two moves possible. Uh, either king g8 or king e8. Uh, king e8 looks more logical because the king tries to run away. Uh, but we also have to make sure that uh, after king g8 uh, we have enough resources to continue the attack. So it makes sense to start exactly with the king g8 move. So we can notice that the king occupies uh, diagonal a2 g8. So bishop b3 actually pins the pawn f7. Uh, which gives white uh, an interesting possibility of uh, queen g6 check, uh, attacking the king and attacking f7 pawn at the same time. Uh, another typical idea here is, of course, to leave the rook, uh, because the queen already controls the h file and limits the king completely, so if the rook comes to g3, it will be just a checkmate. But first, let's see if we can achieve something with the check, right? So queen g6 check. Now it's clear that if king goes to f8, then queen f7 leads to a checkmate. So the king definitely goes to the corner of the board. Now we can come back to uh, the line with uh, queen h6 and then the rook lift. But here we can see that black has additional resource uh, like knight to h7. So what to do here? We can also take on f7. So after bishop takes f7, uh, well, there is a threat of queen h6 followed by bishop g6 just a devastating attack but black has some resources so after rook g8 queen h6 knight to h7 uh, white still has to prove that uh, there is something decisive so uh, this position doesn't look very clear especially if you uh, imagine it in your mind so you have to uh, analyze this position um, prior to making bishop h6 move 
So uh, it is already the sign that probably White could have uh, made something better. So let's come back to uh, King G8 position and uh, check the idea of the rook lift. So rook goes to f3, and there is already a threat of rook g3, and uh, it's clear that black simply has no satisfactory defense. All the pieces are far away, and if, for example, knight goes to g4, well, it's possible to play rook g3 winning the game. Uh, it is also possible to play queen to g6 here, because now, after king h8, we have a simple follow-up of the attack that decides. So rook goes to h3 with the uh, quick checkmate after that. So as we can see, king g8 is not a move here, uh, white easily wins. So what happens after king e8? So you have this position in your mind, because you have to evaluate it prior to making the bishop h6 move. Um, and now there is the question, what to calculate next? The general advice in such a situation is of course to check uh, the most forcing continuations, uh, especially when you uh, attack the king, uh, you definitely want to come up with uh, checks, uh, because uh, every check means that your opponent has no time to regroup the pieces in the vast majority of cases, so that uh, you have the time to uh, bring more and more resources to the attack. So, in this position, white has only two sensible checks. They are queen to h8, uh, it is the first move that should be checked here, of course. Uh, another one is bishop takes f7. Uh, also interesting continuation because, uh, well, we sacrifice uh, one more piece, but at the same time uh, we make the king completely exposed. So let's check them one by one. So first queen to h8. Uh, the point here is that if uh, black plays something like bishop f8, then the knight is hanging on f6, so queen takes f6, and it's enough to break the calculation here because uh, white simply regains the sacrificed minor piece, white already has two extra pawns, and white continues the attack, so white has an absolutely winning position. But what happens if king goes to d7? So king goes to d7, the queen is under attack, and after, let's say, queen to g7, attacking f7 pawn and creating some further threats, uh, black can actually uh, improve the position of the king. So it's possible uh, just to run away with the king c7, king b8. That is the first opportunity. Uh, another one is to play rook c7. And this looks even better because uh, at the same time the rook uh, protects the bishop. So after, let's say, queen takes f7, the king simply goes to c8. So how to evaluate this position? Uh, white actually managed to grab three pawns. Uh, and uh, usually it is considered the enough uh, compensation, enough material compensation for the minor piece. But the problem here is that uh, actually white can't use these pawns. So usually this sort of compensation means that uh, the side that has pawns uh, can push those pawns. Uh, moreover, uh, these pawns are usually uh, past pawns, just like here, white has three connected past pawns on the king side. Uh, but here, pushing these pawns uh, will make the king absolutely exposed. We already discussed this. And uh, black will receive a chance uh, to come up with direct attack against white's king. So this position is uh, definitely better for black. Uh, despite the material equality, uh, well, the extra piece in a further attack on the king side, and black will definitely try to attack on the king side because there are a lot of open files, uh, will give black uh, simply more uh, chances. So, this position is not very cool. Uh, at this point, we have to come back to uh, the position after king e8 and check another possibility uh, that we already included in our candidate list. It is bishop takes f7. So bishop takes f7, king takes f7, what is the follow-up? Again, another check, uh, we have only one here, it is uh, queen to g6. Uh, otherwise, black will just regroup his pieces, bring his rooks to the king side, and it will be too late for white to attack. So queen g6 check, uh, king goes to f8, and it appears that white simply runs out of uh, resources, so there are not so many resources uh, to continue the attack. Uh, so black is ready uh, to improve uh, his position. For example, uh, it is possible uh, to play bishop e8, bishop f7, something like this. Black also uh, can think of uh, probably just playing rook to d7 followed by bishop d8 and then the rook goes to g7 or somewhere. Uh, 
Uh, it is also possible to do something like d6, d5 here. So black has two extra minor pieces. Uh, white has no enough resources to attack. And if, for example, white continues with another check, king just goes to e8 and again uh, runs away through d7 to c7 and to b8. In such a situation when you don't have promising checks, uh, it makes sense to switch to other active moves that uh, make sense. For example, here we can uh, attack f7 uh, pawn with the queen, so to play something like queen g7. And after king d7, so the king has to run away and bishop takes f7, creating a sort of bishop e6 and then taking the bishop on e7. Uh, the king has to go to c7, of course, otherwise it will be too late. And after bishop e6, we attack the bishop e7 simultaneously with the rook c8. So it changes the uh, material balance a bit. Uh, but even after uh, simple rook e8, bishop c8 and king c8, uh, it's uh, hardly ever uh, possible that white will uh, win this game. So once again, uh, white's uh, main power is uh, actually uh, the pawns on the king side, but they can't move, right? So it's not possible to um, bring those pawns to normal movement. It will be too risky uh, having the king on h1. Uh, also, we have to understand that black has pair of bishops and if position becomes open, uh, well, these bishops may become a great power. So again, absolutely unclear result of our calculation. Now let's try to imagine what happens in the mind of a club player. So first of all, it may take a long time calculating these lines because uh, the club player simply has no proper skills of quick calculation. He may also simply uh, evaluate all these lines like extremely unclear. He may also miss a lot of different resources that we already discussed uh, and um, simply break the calculation here uh, thinking that bishop h6 is probably a tempting thing, but it leads to unclear results. So he comes back to this initial position and uh, probably focuses on something else more uh, normal, like rook f3 followed by rook g3. And uh, to be honest, in this particular case, rook f3 followed by rook g3 uh, is a good idea. It's very decent continuation and uh, it leads to a very good position for white except for the fact that bishop h6 actually leads to a decisive advantage and wins uh, almost in several moves. So now let's try to understand uh, what does the experienced player when uh, has such a problem over the board. So he definitely understands that um, the rook f3 move could be very good, but bishop h6 is too tempting to calculate it uh, correctly. Uh, so bishop h6, h6, um, Queen h6 and king e8 are forced moves, so uh, experienced player gets to this position in his mind very, very quickly. And now he starts uh, calculating, of course, uh, the most forcing continuations that we discussed, bishop f7, queen h8 um, and queen g7 maybe. Uh, he understands that in the vast majority of cases uh, the king simply runs away and it leads to unclear position. So. Uh, for the club player, it is the sign that position is unclear. Uh, for the experienced player, it is the sign that, uh, well, uh, maybe there is something wrong uh, with uh, his approach to this position. Um, and he asks uh, a question. So why my opponent actually uh, escapes? So what is going on? And he understands quite quickly that uh, the only chance for black to escape is actually uh, to play into d7. So this move um, helps black in the vast majority of lines. And uh, instead of just breaking the calculation, he starts thinking how to deprive the king of this d7 square. And here comes the idea of bishop e6 move, which is uh, honestly speaking, uh, quite simple uh, to overlook uh, when you calculate the bishop h6. So bishop goes to e6 uh, is an interesting follow-up. Moreover, it is a winning move. So after bishop e6, the king has no square d7 to go away. And white starts uh, threatening with a very natural queen to h8. Check, forcing bishop f8, then taking on f6. And it appears that black simply has no satisfactory defense. Yes, it is the uh, sacrifice of uh, one more minor piece. 
but it makes a great sense because in addition to uh, controlling d7 square uh, white actually manages to open up the f file and diagonal h5 e8 in case black accepts this uh, new sacrifice so for example uh, if a pawn takes on e6 white also reacts with the f5 takes e6 so the pawn replaces the bishop on e6 square so that controlling d7 and preventing king d7 and now we can see that uh, white has uh, a variety of different threats in addition to queen h8 there is also the threat of rook f6 there is also the threat of queen g6 which is uh, more important uh, for example, if uh, rook goes to c7, protecting the 7th rank and uh, protecting the f7, it is not enough because there is a checkmate immediately. So queen g6, king here, and queen f7, checkmate. If, for example, in this situation, the knight goes away somewhere from f6, it also leads to checkmate, for example, this way. So this diagonal h5, e8 is very important uh, to control it. So here, black simply has no defense. So what is going on after bishop e6 if black doesn't take the bishop? It is also very hard to find um, any defense. For instance, if knight jumps somewhere, it doesn't really matter to d7, to g8 or to g4, let's say to g4, then uh, white simply continues with the attack against f7. As we discussed uh, at the very beginning of this example, f7 was uh, our object of attack but there was no uh, chance to attack it second time because exactly the knight controlled h5 square now after the knight goes away from f6 h5 is no longer controlled and queen h5 leads to a quick win because black simply has no satisfactory defense against queen takes f7 game over so if knight goes to d7 it changes nothing so again queen h5 just attacking f7 and the next move will be queen takes f7 Black pieces are so badly placed here that there is no defense. So what happens if, uh, for example, uh, black uh, stays with the knight on f6 and uh, tries to do something else? For instance, if uh, rook goes to c7, uh, just going away from the attack, uh, white continues with the queen h8. That was uh, the main purpose of putting the bishop uh, on e6 to make this queen h8 uh, playable. So bishop goes to f8, now it is the only defense. Uh, queen takes on f6 now, uh, and after f takes e6, uh, it is possible just to capture on e6 uh, with the pawn and uh, what will have a devastating position. It is also possible just to continue with the queen g6 check. So very annoying check, because if king uh, goes to either d7 or e7, there will be queen e6 checkmate like this or like this. So if rook goes to f7, then f takes e6. And, well, it also wins because white, at the very least, just wins the rook next move, which will give white, uh, at the very least, again, uh, the extra exchange uh, with a further attack. But most likely, there will be just a checkmate very soon. So what happens if, let's say, bishop goes to d7, actually the same. So queen h8, bishop f8, queen takes f6, f takes e6, now check, and after king e7, f6, checkmate. If bishop goes to f8 immediately, it also doesn't change anything because queen takes f6, f takes e6, and f takes e6 leads to absolutely winning position. There are two threats to take the bishop on f8 and also to play queen f7 with the checkmate. So black is simply helpless here. Finally, if uh, black plays d5, uh, trying to connect the queen to the defense, uh, white plays queen h8 check, bishop f8, queen takes f6, f takes e6 and f takes e6 and the fact that uh, queen already uh, protects the bishop on f8 doesn't change anything uh, because white simply has a thread of queen f7 checkmate uh, and if uh, black tries to protect this square with the help of let's say rook c7 then the easiest way to win this is to play queen g6 king e7 rook f7 king d6 and e7 and when the king occupies the 7th rank, white just uh, takes on f8 with the check and uh, at the same time promoting the pawn to a queen with the absolutely winning position. So that is how it works. So the proper calculation includes uh, not only uh, checking most obvious continuations, but also asking yourself uh, correct questions. So when you deal with uh, the problem, like here after king e8, so most obvious moves uh, simply lead nowhere 
you have to uh, use the technique of uh, phrasing the problem actually it is called it is one of uh, the advanced techniques of calculation that we will also discuss later in the course um, so actually you just ask yourself a question why uh, my opponent's defense works so the answer is obvious here because the king has the square d7 to escape so in a vast majority of lines uh, the king simply goes to d7 and then hides somewhere on the queen's side so how to deprive the king of this uh, king d7 move of course with the bishop e6 move it is the only chance for us to do this so what can stop white from making this bishop takes h6 decision is actually missing the bishop e6 resource in a calculation we can already say what is the reason for uh, missing such a resource but for a better understanding of the problem let's have a look at the second example